Hey everyone, I'm back with a different game just to change things up. My sister got this for me last year and it's always kind of been on the back burner, but I've heard amazing things about this little relaxing exploration game. So I'm really, really excited. The music already is quite lovely. So soothing. I had it on earlier to change the settings and it's quite, quite nice. So let's jump right in because I'm super excited. Thank you to my sister for buying this <laughs> for me and then I never started it until today. Shed works. There's an insect. I was like, what is that? Right now I'm just like absorbing everything and this face looking back at me is, is a little much. But I am intrigued. This looks like it could be me. Ah, it is. Quest started. The ceremony. Oh, I can see up her nose. Oh, I can climb up her nose. Goodness, I'm a little climber. That must be my endurance bar. That little... little square. And the movement, oh gosh, the style of the animation is is really unique. Way she run. Oh, so we probably have puzzles then. Most exploration games tend to have like little puzzles, climbing. I was right. That is my stamina. Oh, this door. I can climb this door. Okay, I don't think... I think we have to figure out... Oh, there's a ladder here. Let's go up the ladder. And there's the exit. Oh no. My L stick is kind of sticky. This is stunning. I love, I love genres like this with like a um, unusual aviation. Oh, that looks like a hot air balloon or something. Oh, um, okay. I thought I was like, oh no, is there fall damage? Hold down B to sprint while mo moving around. And what happens when I'm tired? Oh. As I suspected. Shadow. The colors are just stunning. Ibex camp. <laughs> Gravity must work a little bit differently here. I can jump very, very high. Oh, lost myself for a moment there. Get cozy, everyone. We're in this. In this nice, simple life. I can feel Jaddy smiling behind her mask, just as I know she can feel the teeth bearing little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous, she says softly, sweetly amused. In her eyes, I probably have little to worry about. You know you have nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? <sighs> and yet... I shrug, but any attempts to act casual are fruitless. The movement is jerky, and I don't think I've ever been more aware of my little shoulders. She laughs. I mean it. 
but I do know how you are. You're going to be nervous until you started, and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put you in the seat. You were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping onto me. I feel the memory in my fingers. But then I promised you it was going to be all right. I told you how much I had loved riding my bike as a young woman and how wonderful the wind felt through fabric. Suddenly, there you were. You sat down, you leaned forward and put those little grasping claws on the handles and you were off. And I remember thinking, just watching you tear over the sand. Look at her. She can do whatever she wants. Jaddy reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. You can say, Will. I take a breath. I think I'm ready. I thank Jaddy for the encouragement and tell her with a nod that I think I'm ready. I know you are, so let's get you started. You'll need to head to Hilal and Driss. Drish, Driss should already have made the arrangements for your bike, and Hilal will share something. Well, let's say, as useful as it is fun, hmm? I think I might suspect what Jadi's saying, but I stay quiet. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. I'll be back soon. I tell Jadi I'll be back soon. Sable, don't go planning your turn before you've even left. Take all the time you need. It's a big decision you're making out there. I tell her that's why I'm so eager to make it, to choose well and quickly so that it don't go too far down the wrong path. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So, don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. Now go speak to Hilal. I'll be there to see you off. And speak to Driss as well. I've told him to arrange your bike with Cizo, but you know how he is. Ah, oh, I have something to give you, a compass, to help you on your journey. It's the same one I used on my gliding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there. Perfectly weighted and crafted, each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Thank you. Compass hold button. Oh, nice. I like the UI. Very, very simple. I don't know what the 16 next to the sun means, but we'll figure that out soon enough. At least there's no fall damage here. <laughs> Hello. Oh, sorry, X. I was so used to playing my PlayStation, X is throwing me off. As I approach Halal, they give me an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verve and vigor. And on a day like this, I'm ready to match it with a touch of nerves for balance. Sable, take this. Halal hands me a small round stone. As it nestles into my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands, but emanating from within. I rub my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. What is this? Try to sound less confused than I am. Oh, I tried to sound, but but ask Kalal what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal what I feel. Connectedness? Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gliding stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now, it's empty or dormant and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. Take it to the temple ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. Hillel clasps his hand, their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. As I'm about to leave, Hillel stops me. Oh, you haven't gotten your bike yet, have you? It's a bit of a trek to the temple, so go see Driss. He wants to... He was meant to get that ready for you, yes? I remember Jaddy's words now and tell Hillel I'll go and see Driss. Quest started, Whispering Stones. Okay, let's go get our bike. Oh! Ah! Hello? Oh, this is Jaddy. Hello, little glider. That's big glider to you. <laughs> she laughs. You're right, you are, Sable noted. Adult and big glider. I'll keep it in mind. Ooh. And this must be Driss. And that might be my bike. 
Though I've told myself not to be too eager, it's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but now I strongly suspect that he's been working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore or, or will I get used to it? Driss turns with a bit of a start. Sable! Uh, uh, hello? Um, hello, how are you today? I asked Driss how he is. I'm well. I let it hang there for a moment, but I can't do it. I'm too keen and the words spill out. I asked Driss if he might sort of possibly maybe have a bike for me. Your bike! He yells it like it's an idea he just had. Your bike, yes, of course, right, yes, your bike. That was meant to, that I prepared for you, because today is your... Gliding, yes. Driss nods with me. Yes, of course, right, yes, yes, yes. I do have that. My blood runs cold. Has he forgotten? By which mean, I arranged it for you in a, well, it's sort of a tutorial for you. Ah, they're hiding the tutorial, but calling it a tutorial, so it's like hiding it in plain sight. A tutorial? Yes, exactly, a learning experience. You see, Sable, before one can own their own bike, they must prove that they can ride a bike by taking a test ride on a different bike. I think about it and find I've never been, I've never heard of that part of the gliding, but just does seem earnest, sort of. So instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like to try you to try out this bike as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter at his side. Quite old, a little shabby. A tester, if I've ever seen one. I'll give it a go. Really? I mean, yes, good. Be gentle, though. This sand cutter's older than Jaddy. I keep trying to say Jedi, because this place kind of like, you know... Let, let's, let's call it Star wars -y. You treat her with respect. Now ride the bike through the ring and back. And here's some advice for you, my young glider. Don't fall off. Ooh, when you're not riding it, your hover bike will appear as a blue icon on your compass. All right, let's go do that. I keep trying to jump. Okay, let's go. Ooh, look at all this smoke coming out of it. Ooh, it's like really creaking. Whoa! What happened there? Was it because I hit a stone? It's this, this bike is struggling. I, I could almost feel it and all of this smoke belching out of it. I return to Driss with some, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations, how was your first pre-glide ride? Any rat strange rattles, unexplained hissing, small fires? What do you mean, fires? Surely you'd notice if you were on fire even a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Driss, is this bike dangerous? Well, he doesn't finish. Have you ever, have you already been by Halal? Right. I nearly forgotten about Hilal and thank Driss for the reminder. Wait, I just saw Hilal before at least nudging him a little bit, a bit about the bike. I ask him if I'll still be getting one. Well, you're getting the use of the sand cutter. That's something, eh? You can borrow it to run your little errands. My little errands? And Hilal's got something to show you, too. Help you out with more of that uh, um, mobility you're after. With my confidence in this exercise only lightly tarnished, I thank Driss very much for his help and his bike, and I depart for Hilal. I thought Hilal said that was too far for me to go. Do I run? Maybe I can just use this bike then. Okay, activate the stone. There we go, we're tracking it now. Ah, there, and it should... Gosh, there's day and night cycles. Oh, crap. It's really chugging along.
thought I was looking at the UI, that thing on the top right. I'm wondering what it is. See that? Looks like a worm. <laughs> what is this worm? So that looks like it here or up there. Either one of these. Okay, this does not look like it. This just looks like ruins. So, let's get to... This part right here. To the base of this. Ah, oh, if only there was a way up there. There must be another way. Oh, wait. Still farther? Maybe this is not it. Yeah, guess not. Oh no, it must be. Well, we've explored to the end of the map there. Gosh, I wish this thing would go faster. Okay, there must be a way up there. That looks like it. That must really be it. So maybe I. Oh. I forget that I can jump. Maybe I can jump up here. Ah, and I can climb. Ah, yes. Climbing is a thing. Come on, don't lose stamina. Oh, just made it. This music is so soothing. Ooh, what's this? Hello, what are you? A chum egg. Oh, cute. What does it do? Chum eggs offered by up by the chums when small when planting themselves into the ground. Perfectly smooth and hard as a rock. These eggs seem to float with low light. With with how light they are. Oh my gosh, am I reading? There must there must be a good place to deliver these. Oh, that's what that was. Those are chum eggs. Wings. I suspect. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh. Everything is bad. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to climb out of that. Oh, I'm in trouble. Okay. Oh, uh, let us find a way to the altar since we're still here. I'm sure I'll know what it is when I see it. Ah. This must be. The colors here are very, very pastel. It's, for my eyes, it's unsettling. I preferred it outside. The stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Hmm. Am I afraid? Yes and no. I'm ready for Rohana to know me. I'm ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in this sacred place. I know I am in her sight. Light. Oh my. Is this supposed to happen? 
<laughs> is this what everyone goes through? Oh gosh, where am I going now? Get up, girl. Okay, at least my stone is activated, but what the hell? I could have been seriously hurt. Whoa. Okay, so this is probably a thing everyone can do. Hey. Could I get up there? Could I glide onto a wall? I can. Perfect. Okay, I know I'm really bad at stuff like this. Like, jump. Jumps have never been something that I've been very good at. <laughs> that. I'm gonna shoot for that one there in the corner. <laughs> Just in case. Oh, I made it. Yahoo! I'm gonna glide back down to my little craft. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Oh my gosh, this thing is really rickety. He probably doesn't have my bike, does he? Kind of sad. I don't have a hope my bike's better than this, because this bike's pretty trash. Moving so slowly. <laughs> I want to be able to zip through this place. Oh gosh, Jaddy has been walking for ages. I have to go up here first. Back to Driss. Oh, what's... Hello, what is this? Post box. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Unread message is zero. Have a good day. <laughs> Hello, Driss. Oh my gosh. I see the X and I just press the PlayStation type, uh, the location for X. When I return to Halal, it's clear they know that I've, what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I even left. Is it incredible? How does it feel? Exciting, true freedom. I tell Halal that hovering is exciting and ramble for a moment about all the things I'll be able to do when I'm out there in the world. Most of them involve me falling on my head and not getting hurt, but I'm sure I'll come up with more in practice. Right? You can do anything you want. Halal's mood doesn't darken, but they sigh. the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling, just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. I'll just be out there heaving myself into chasms. Mm. I'll heave myself into chasms for you. I tell Halal I'll throw myself into a thousand chasms on their behalf and they giggle. That's what I like to hear. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know what, that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. 
takes a serious focus. Alal laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it, and I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean much if there were all gains and no loss, hmm? I think about that, but decide that there is already too much loss in my mind to consider it much further. I'm saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. My advice? Try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all that out there, but the world is an easier place if you put joy first. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help and tell them they'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance all in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Halal gestures towards the tower. It seems Sizo wants to see me before I leave the clan. But I don't have my bike. Oh, I just got here and I already, I already feel fond of these people. That's Jaddy. Oh, that's not Jaddy. Who's this? As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Something in your mind? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Alario over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Alaria. Do you want me to get her back? Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine. I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. Ah, yes. Trusting your children that they can go off exploring and also being upset that they're so far away that you have to go get them. Whoa, this is a long way up. Who would live up here? Oh my goodness. <gasps> stuff. I've been ignoring stuff. Sizo is an outclanner to the Ibexi. I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and think of her more as a kind of distant relation than sort any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code must go to where they are needed. But Sizo has been among us so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there's a perception among the other clans that the Ibexi are quite insular, or that our designation of Ibexi versus outclanners suggests some nervous otherings for those of those who are unlike us, but in practice such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Sizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Better now that I'm getting a bike. Sizo has a throaty quality in her voice and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, Jaddy told me how excited you were. Sizo sniffs. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it! What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. Don't begrudge Driss his forgetfulness. Where I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might just be as scattered, and besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hover bike parts yourself. I'm gonna make my own hover bike? I asked Hizo if I'm expected to make my own hover bike. No, you're not going to make your hover bike, you're going to build your own hover bike. Uh, okay, of course. To make suggestions, you're creating something. But your bike already already exists. They simply haven't taken form yet. Here, take this. Sizo hands me something. The navigator. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. Should be useful in finding the old parts. I asked Sizo where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships and fragments spread apart. A good start would be to the ship down there near the camp. You'll find another on that great rock near the other side of the canyon and another behind the old dam in the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. I'll be back before you know it. Together we will create something new out of the old. Dang it, I thought I was getting a bike. Okay. So, navigator. 
use your navigator. Place marker. Why is it red? Oh, it's just a different... Okay. It's just a different color. I don't know why I thought it was all going to be blue. Alright. Where's my borrowed bike? Down here. Well, at least I have something to ride on for now. Here we go. The ship. I wonder if we are, oops, native to this planet. Because these ships... Look like they're spacefaring. Oh, there's smoke coming out of that. There you go. There's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing in the dashboard of the cockpit. Well, duh, push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording. It's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Ramen. Concentrate. I don't think I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Alright, let's see if what that old machine has told us holds up. If not, there'll be hell to pay. I hear some sound... I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks, buttons being pressed, perhaps? Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, Ramen. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh. On Rohana's mask, not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. And then, the sounds of someone cheering. It worked! We're flying! More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay, let's focus. The thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Let me check the machinist's notes. A long pause. The rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen? That lever, Tama. The one that you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to... The recording cuts off there. That's freaky. However, I do not see a control panel that I could get. It might be from the outside then. Saima, are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I'm older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice, you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get me. Give it back, Saima. I told Sa Saima to give it back. I am of gliding age, and she is a child. Nope. Don't think I will. Saima laughs off my irritation, but I'm going to give her the sat I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. Cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put my hand proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles, that's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. But then I simply stifle a sly, shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in camp know where I can find some. Oh my gosh. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just want my bike. This child. This child, I should run it over. Okay, let's ask Driss. Maybe Driss will have an idea about where we can get... Dang beetles, I am being just like run around the on these silly errands. Driss. Could I ask about catching beetles for that awful little Saima? Do you know where I can find be some beetles? There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up and catch one, though. Of course you can't. There's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetle will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. 
Ah, Driss asked me a series of increasingly strange questions before I make an excuse to take my leave. Alright, let's get these beetles. East, huh? Oh, too bad my map doesn't really show what east is. Oh, but it's tracked. The day and night cycles are quite quick here. Nest. Over this way. Okay, now we're going in the right direction. Here. Here. Maybe it's up there. That's too far for me to climb up, though. Oof. Okay, there must be a way up then. Oh my gosh, how do I get up there? Do I glide from another area? There's no way I'd be able to climb this. Oh, here I will. Oh, I can crouch. So far, the quests have been a little bit on the frustrating side. I feel like I'm forced to do errands, which uh, in games I don't really enjoy being forced to feel like I have to do meaningless errands. But visually, this game is stunning and the music is beautiful. So it does make it a bit easier to get through. Okay, seeds. I need to get seeds. But where? Oh, there. That's not a seed. Is this where the seeds are? Ah, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna hide in the bush. Okay, that's probably not how it's done. Maybe I have to throw it? Oh. Okay, I so I throw it. Oh, cute! Oh! There's another beetle. Go get it! Go get it! Okay, fine. I'm ignoring you. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I got my two beetles. I need one more then, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how much of this game I I will play if it if it continues to feel like I'm doing a bunch of errands for people. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I like doing side quests as a thing, but when it feels like I'm just 
doing stuff for others without any kind of relief or I don't know without any meaningful progress to me like this like gather beetles for this kid I don't know it just seems throws me off a little all right child come back here I feel embarrassingly vindicated as I hand Saima the beetles, but rather than gloat, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving, you're leaving, and you're never coming back. Comfort her. She blows her nose and wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. I miss her too. There's been a letter here and there, but it's always to us rather than to me. I'm not bitter, but I hope not to be like that. Please don't go. I tell Saima not to worry that I'll be back sooner than she knows. I'm sure she I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And I add that if I'm not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready for her gliding by then and she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good, then I suppose I can come see you off. I thank her and say goodbye for now. Also, the dialogue could be uh managed or presented a little better than I said because I know I said it I don't know I'm just being picky I think this game is not so much about the story as it is the exploration and the visuals because that like this is really pretty like this could be like a, a desktop background for any anyone it's really nice the story is not getting me though i'm intrigued by the lore of this place like why are we all wearing a mask why do we look like we live in isolation so many questions i bet you i'm gonna have to do another errand here or something i don't know I don't even know if I'm going the right way. We'll find out soon enough. It is an exploration game after all. Okay. That doesn't look like the correct way. Maybe this is. Oh gosh, there was a way through here. Just didn't notice it. The movement is a little clumsy, but that's okay. I think it kind of lends to the style in a way. Nice little jumping puzzle. I like that I can climb all surfaces. <laughs> it's kind of nice that I'm not limited to certain surfaces I can climb on. It's nice having this kind of freedom. They really do like their stairs and heights here, though. Everything's like a hundred steps up. Can I see my clamp? Oh, here we go, running jump. This thing's humming, so it works. Strange that it has not been salvaged. Atomic power supply. 
And my ship is this way. And then the last place is the dam. And that should be back towards the camp. Balloon is down now. Sorry, as I'm moving around, I'm just kind of absorbing the the space. It's just so beautiful to look at this artwork. My hovercraft is just bouncing around. Oh. Alright, let's see. This dam. Where would I find the control panel here? I can hear waves crashing, I believe. Or it could be wind. Here we go. Oh gosh, am I supposed to be doing this? Okay, I guess I am supposed to be doing that. So at least we can get back up. I'm assuming that that's it. Oh. Put it in this thing. Open that door. Get on inside. And hopefully, the control panel is here. Got it. All right, let's. If there's anything else that. No, no. Let's go back. <laughs> Don't slide down the ladder. I wonder if I can climb quick. We quickly would be... no, it doesn't seem like I can. At least my gliding is not attached to my stamina. That's a relief. Back to camp we go! Oh my goodness. Chug, 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 chug. I think this game is pretty short, too. What I remember, it's a... Uh... Oh, wait. No, I have to bring the parts back to... Oh, God. To the machinist. What can I do here? Can I give this to you? Omar is a man of few words and he's nothing if not consistent. I'm assuming it's to fill water and feed the animals. We don't have time for that right now. What is this? Money. Oh, 
Up we go. Very long, winding staircase. I return to Caesar with the parts, and it's as she... And it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, S Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? I'm ready. Caesar relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily. But there's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Sizu is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the components you acquired, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They've always belonged to her. All we're doing is assembling her, from what she has already been. I nod and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that the machines have names held for ages like deep secrets. Unheard by those unequipped to hear, to listen. We will find this one's name together. Ships of old, assemble the machine. <laughs> Gliding bike wings. Nice. Okay, let's put another piece in. Gliding bike booster. Fantastic. And finally, gliding bike front. Oh. My bike, she's beautiful. Speak to Cecil. Listen. Cizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer. Simoon. All at once I know the hover bike's name. Simoon, I say in a whisper to let Cizo know. Simoon, Simoon, well done, Sable. What does it mean? What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Cizo looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing, even when I lean close. I tell Simoon that I'm eager to know her better, and Cizo looks quite proudly at both of us. You are ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. What? An old, odd blessing, perhaps, but Cizo is prone to such things. I can read in her tone that is meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simun, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travel, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. The machinist badge. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth and they'll give you more badges. I think Cizo twice for good measure and give a bow. I'm ready. Okay, speak to Jaddy about the ceremony. Oh, Jaddy, where are you? All the way up there. I have my gliding wings. Oh gosh. Did I go the wrong way? Oh, there's a ladder here. Perfect. I don't need to speak to you. I just want to get my gliding on. Do I even have it selected? Yeah, I do. This is not Jaddy. Is Jaddy up there, maybe?
Is that Jaddy? That must be. Let's uh, see if we can make it. This is not Jaddy. This is Alaria. Oh, a cartographer. Greetings, child. I saw you looking longly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? She really is. I nod enthusiastically. It really is an impressive vessel. However nervous I get imagining being up there all alone, I wonder if anyone e anyone's ever fallen off of one. Best not to ask right now. Well, good to meet you. And oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. Suppose if you've come all this way to see me, it's perhaps probably a map you're after? I would love a map. I tell the cartographer I'd love a map. Okay. Of course you would. That'd be 50 cuts. To my ears, it's a fair price of a map, but too expensive for pre-gliding glider. With empty pockets, I tell Jordan I'll be back. I need to ask Jaddy for some money. If only I could find Jaddy. How far did this lady go? Is she all the way out on the desert? No, now it shows that he's she's there. What? What in the hell? Okay. I'm just gonna go to her home. Because she was wandering around, but maybe she's back home. and make it okay jaddy seriously is this jaddy this is zeki Maybe she's inside that thing? Seems very unlikely. <laughs> Where could that old lady have gone? I followed it on my compass, and it wasn't anywhere there. Gosh. He doesn't know where she is. I would speak to Jaddy if I knew where she was. You know, I'm compelled to just...
Nothing is more infuriating than not being able to find what you're supposed to do. So, I will leave it here. Because I cannot find Jaddy. But maybe one day I will. Because the map shows she's right there. Unless she's six feet under. Alright, thanks all for watching. Bye-bye.